This is AIM Agriculture. We're super excited to be back home in the home of champions, right? There is a super masterclass that is coming up. And if you want to be on the waiting list, don't forget to send me a WhatsApp message and just say masterclass on plus two five four seven two three triple seven five zero eight see you in class i'll be the one and this time round it's a farmer teaching a farmer let's go in guys yeah this is nicholas from eldoret starting from an egg to beef And today, we not only bring to you a Guinea Falls farmer, but a very unique Guinea Falls farmer. Why unique? Unique because they are very good, beautiful, very easy. How did you start this small thing? Thinking of Guinea Falls, why could you keep chicken? I started with chicken, but because of the cost of production, buying the feed was much less. Regard, uh, compared to this, white guinea pigs, it is the best. They take a few amount of feed, maybe half half the chicken, and it's for one. What about um, the market? Market. This is a beauty ornamental, specifically people view them, they check on them. They are very good. Uh, one piece goes for 4,500, the white ones, compared to the dotted ones. The dotted ones are much lower, uh, which goes for 2,500 in the markets. They are very best. A lot of people like them. They call, uh, people order them very far apart. All of East Africa, most wow. of these parts. Wow. Now, you know, in everything we do as AIM Agriculture, and as you, we try to do the farming systems that we, we try to explore, we try to explore something that is profitable, right? Good. Now, you say the white uniforms are mostly bought for ornamental, is it? So the dotted ones are bought for me or bought for ornamental? It depends with the people. Some people like the dotted ones, but most people of them are regarding to what I, I get from my clients and everyone who is interested in the white ones people like them because they're very attractive then there is this aspect of the dotted ones seems to be the wild ones the wild ones so people do not like the wild ones because some of them they are these people can neglect them they can kill them but the white ones they are very good in, in terms of security security how? How? Security. They make a lot of noise in case of any, any, uh, something not normal in the compound or in the surrounding. They make a lot of noise. Wow, guys. So are these guinea pigs like, do they familiarize themselves with the owner so that when someone, a stranger comes in, they make the noise or they just make noise when there's somebody in the compound? Yeah, they are. They know the even the, the owner of the compound, they know the even the sound. There is a sound that they have in their their system of their brains. They know there's something going on that's not normal. They will make a lot of noise, you'll be alerted and you'll check whatever's going on in the, in the compound. Back to business. I want to stop Guinea for fun. Now that you have the experience, you are the master, you will take us through. Assuming I want to stop Guinea for fun. I have bought a pair, a male and a female. Is that so? Yeah. How, uh, after how long does this guinea fowl start laying? And how many eggs? From a uh, day old, you get specifically when you properly feed them extensively and conclusively, you'll get a uh, uh, it's nine months. But if you don't feed them, that you rearrange them. It's one year. So nine months before I see my first egg, that is 
controlled feeding. Free range is one year before you get the first egg. In a clutch, how many eggs should I expect? For the white ones, you expect 60, 70. Oh! Compared to the dotted ones. Guys, you hear that? One guinea fowl will give us 60 to 70 eggs per season. Per season, yeah. not per clutch. No, per year it is 140, 130. How many times does this lay a year? Twice a year. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's why this is the season, you see? We have eggs. Okay. Before I lose traction, we've talked about seasons. And someone told me, and I thought it's a layman's uh, just conversation, that guinea fowls do lay during a certain season. Is it so? Yeah, it's true. What is that season? Or when is the time of the year that they lay? Starting from April. April to September, mostly August, late August, August, November. The most of this, this August is the last one, mostly August. Then it comes to Jan, January, February, March. There, the last season. Oh. <laughs> this person told me, you know what? Gripples lay during time of land preparation. So it's it. Yeah. In a plowing land, these two seasons, the half season, and the other season. Yeah. Now, 70 eggs, back to business. Assuming I don't have an incubator, how many eggs should I leave for this guinea fowl to hatch? Can it sit on the eggs? They sit on the all 70 eggs. Really? Yeah. Really? Guys, you hear that? Uh -huh. Then, if you are a farmer who has chicken, if you have incorporated them with the chicken, you can give them to the chicken, they hatch and then they will uh, feed them as their as their parents. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now the journey is good. We are doing well. Now I've got my seventy eggs. I've given the chicks to hatch for me. Now let's talk about mortality or disease resistance or how hardy are they during breeding. Compared to the chicken, yes. assuming you get the 70 in one season, okay. from the 70, you'll get almost 90% mm -hmm. of the, the uh, that is, you'll get almost 60 mm -hmm. until they, they become mature. Okay. So long as you first give them the vaccine, of which they are very hard than the chicken. So this thing that people say, guinea fowls cannot be vaccinated. It's just uh, something, just it's just a myth, right? These birds have to be vaccinated like They chicken. have to be vaccinated. The reason is, one, you take care of anything happening in case any chronic disease coming. Uh, it's a preventive measure okay. for this. Okay. Not that it is, yes, it is hard. You can, so long as you don't even give them any, uh, any vaccines, they will survive. You will get even 50 out of the 70, but it is good. For you to keep safe your bag. Okay. You don't want to lose even one bag. True. Yeah. Great. We brooded our, our chicks. What is the mortality percentage in this brooding season? Assuming you've hatched 70%. Like, no 70%, 70 eggs. How many eggs as a farmer should I expect to survive if I've done everything right? You've done everything right, you'll get 65. 65? Yeah. So it means the mortality is about... Uh, the mortality is about 5%. Yeah. Livability is about 95%. That's good. So I've hatched 65 eggs. I'm sorry, I've hatched 70 chicks. I've brooded 65 chicks to maturity. For instance, let's say 64 eggs. So I have 32 pairs. How much is a pair? A pair, we have the two, two varieties, the white one and the dirty one. The white one? The white one, a mature one goes for 4,500. A pair. Not a pair, a pair goes for 9,000. Wow, really? Yeah, that's why we, we need to empower the youth. Mm -hmm. Specifically this green generation. This is the to go This is the to go for, yeah. Guys, you know that? A pair of mature 
white uniforms goes for 9,000 shillings. Is it? Huh. Interesting. I love the composition. I love the composition. Now, nine thousand shillings times thirty-two. Do the math for yourself. Just in a couple of months, right? Nine months. In nine months. Uh, that's a good deal, is it? Now, every juice has different squeeze. What are the biggest challenges one should expect while starting this venture? Very child, you should you should be very patient with the laying season. Okay. And you should make sure you feed them. Mm -hmm. Whenever the season starts, have you have to feed them very well to get the 70 or 80 the 100 percent for the season. Okay. Let me take you back. Sorry for inter inter interjecting. Let me take you back. When you are talking about uniforms, remember we are, we are comparing them to chicken. Why should I keep guinea fowls instead of chicken? You get what I'm saying? Talk about their feeding. We've seen disease, diseases, they are more resistant than chicken. What about their feeding? Do they feed the same amount of feed like chicken? Or no. Yes? no, no, they feed like how many? 50%. Yeah. You feed uh, a chicken can eat 140 grams, a fully grown chicken. 140 grams per, per day. This one eats 60 or 70 grams per day. 60 or 70 grams per day. Per day and it is enough. Half, mm. the, half the amount. Mm. And one guinea fowl is equal to nine chicken. <laughs> I think you, you can do it for eh? the, What is the spacing that is required? Do, can I just keep these birds indoors or because I see you as a free range, some are indoors, some are semi free range. What about someone who's got very small space? For this, mm. it has no problem. It depends if you use uh, available resources. Mm. If you have a small piece of land, mm. just uh, in, uh, give them a small piece, piece of place, mm. feed them there and it will be okay. So long as you give all balanced diet to them. Really? But for for the someone who has a big large chunk of land, he can give it he can keep even one thousand. No problem. Because they like eating insects. That is the advantage. Okay. I see here you get a very big number of these birds. At the chick stage, at the semi chick stage, at the mature stage, at the growing stage. How many in total, roughly, are you talking about? Just a few, like 400 in total. Guys, this space here is the smallest space. It is less than a plot, less than 50 by 100, and we've got 400 white guinea fowls, very comfortable. Do you sell? Yeah, I give them, the chicks, I, I give them to the farmers. My specific point is to empower the youth. That's why I sell the chicks for them to grow and make sure they produce. Anywhere in the country? Everywhere in the country, in Kenya, even Uganda, Tanzania, East Africa, all of them. Guys, in the description, I've shared this number. In the description, I've shared this number. Contact him, give him your orders, he'll deliver. Actually, we just met him delivering some to you. To his friend, I think. Yeah, was, was oh, a pair, right? Yeah. How do you differentiate between um, a male guinea fowl and a female guinea fowl, for instance? You check the check the helmets. Okay. The helmets. Mm -hmm. The female one is a shorter. Mm -hmm. The male is a long one. Mm -hmm. Then there is another difference. Mm -hmm. You check out the cheeks. Okay. You find the, the, the other, the female ones have a straight chin. Mm -hmm. The male ones have the curve. Okay, this is what I mean by a chin. You find the one that is straight like this, these are female ones. Mm -hmm. See this? Oh yes. Whenever it's straight, mm -hmm. it's a female. Mm -hmm. 
Whenever it's calm, it's a male. I brood them for one month. I don't sell a day old because it will be a stress, a stressful for a, for a beginning farmer, for any farmer. I make them, I brood for them for one month. After one month, I give it to the farmer. Okay. This is where I hatch the eggs of the guinea fowls. Yeah, I get the day old from this point. Basically, it's basically where we live. We take 28 days inside the hatchery. After that, we take them to the river. Guys, I bring to you Nature Farm today. If you are new to our YouTube channel, kindly hit the subscribe button, like and share. This is M Agriculture for you. We will never miss to surprise you.